What's hey, up? hey, what's up? What's up? Welcome. Thank you. I'm just gonna let let the first gang know right now that we started. Sounds good. Okay, perfect. Yeah, people, you know, people, some of my community, they don't use Instagram, so people need to start using Instagram, man. Where are your followers mostly? Twitter? Yeah, Twitter and Discord and Telegram. Yeah. People don't like to show their faces. They don't like to show their faces. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, man. I mean, it kind of makes sense for the world that we're in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, they, hopefully they stood, hopefully they make an Instagram account like right now. <laughs> the future modern yes. and appreciate that. Make an Instagram account just so you can watch this live. Um, it will also be, if anyone does miss it, it will be on our IGTV after we get off. So feel free to share that also. Perfect, perfect. So welcome everybody to another Out the Frame. Today, I am talking to Harrison first. I'm really excited for this conversation. This is an ongoing series where we talk to Black um, artists about their process, where they see the future of NFTs and crypto art, um, and I guess the future of Blackness too, in a way. Uh, instead of me doing an intro for you, I would love for you to tell people who you are and what you do. You are the first um, musical artist that we've spoken to, so I'm super excited about this one. Okay, well, thanks, yeah. Uh, well, like you said, my name is Harrison First. Um, I'm a producer, artist, DJ, um, and I also have my own social token, and uh, I create NFTs as well. Uh, so I'm based here in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, originally from New York, uh, kind of go back and forth before the pandemic. Uh, and yeah, I, I like to say like, <clears throat> like I'm a mood, m mood curator or something, or I don't know, I just like to create stuff. So, so whatever that encompasses, you know, like, that's what I kind of like embark in at the moment. I like that a mood curator. That makes sense. Yeah. I feel like as a DJ, that has to be part of your practice, right? Understanding yeah. what the vibe is creating the vibe. Yeah, I try to. I try my best. I actually started out as a producer. I remember, like, uh, I think it was high school. I tried DJing first. And I just couldn't get the hang of it. And then I really got, uh, I would say, I fell in love with producing more. At that one, like, I really fell in love with that because I started out as a drummer, jazz band, concert band. Um, and then I think DJing started happening uh, later on in life. You know, after I started putting out songs and stuff, people assumed that I was a DJ. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I better start that DJing. better be a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, a future modern is calling you an Afrofuturist king. Wow. Damn. Damn, man. Thank you, bro. I see my man and Joel in the building. Uh, he laughed. I don't know what he laughing at, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you just told us that you are in Stockholm right now. Um, I guess let's get into, I, I did want to start with getting into your movement into music, but how long have you been in Stockholm? What is the scene like there? And what, like, it must be a huge difference moving from New York to there. Yeah, you know, the scene, to be honest with you, in the beginning, I wasn't really aware of what the, scene, the music scene was in Sweden. And that was just to my own ignorance. I, I really didn't know. Um, I've always thought like the world was either in, you know, Atlanta, New York, LA, when it comes to music. Um, and those places, I thought those were the key markets. And, you know, creating in New York is, is amazing. Like, I think you let like the, the city kind of curate your vibe for you and create that energy for you. And you're able to find muses everywhere to kind of like embed into your music. Uh, and you meet so many interesting people um, from all different disciplines of creation. Uh, and that was great. And, and I really loved that. And I met some really great people there and worked with a lot of great people there uh, towards the end. 
Um, but then when I came to Sweden, uh, like I quickly found out that the quality of work here is like at a, it's a real high level. Uh, and people here, um, they're really modest and they don't really, uh, they don't really talk too much about what they're doing. They just show you what they're doing. And you can see like a high quality of work. Um, yeah, so it was like a shock to me. I remember my first session, I, I was I was working with someone and, you know, uh, this was new for me because, you know, usually what I'm used to is there's an engineer, there's a producer, then you have a songwriter and then, you know, the artist might be in the room. Um, but, you know, here I realized like people know how to do every single thing in, in, a, in a session. So I was working with this female songwriter and I wasn't capturing the right chords. And she was like, oh, you know, I got it, let me do it. And then she, and then she just played the chords out. And then she ended up like, oh, I like my vocals like this. And then she started like engineering her own vocals. I'm like, damn, like, I really got to step my game up being <laughs> out here, you know, because they're so good, man. You know, even like people who are not like even pursuing music that much, they're just like the average person is really good. So I love it. I get like this diverse uh, perspective of uh, how to create and, what styles to create when you know coming seeing both things? Uh, we have a future modern agreeing with you, saying that the scene is amazing. Okay, yeah, see, so I'm not lying. <laughs> so let's go backwards and tell me how you got into music to begin with. I know that you said you started getting into production and then went back to DJing, but what was your introduction to music? Uh, it, well, I grew up in Pensacola, New Jersey. And um, that was, I, I just came up in music through the school system. Uh, I was like, I was in fourth grade and I was just always, I don't know if it's just because uh, just who I am as a Nigerian American, I just gravitated to the drums and rhythm. My dad was never a drummer. Nobody was ever a drummer. I just really like, I liked it. I don't know, I felt rhythm. So it started out as like concert band in fourth grade. Uh, and then kind of, as I grew up, you know, all the way up to high school, then that's when it was like, you know, marching band, um, concert band, orchestra, jazz band, uh, indoor drum line, you know, drum line, just everything uh, from playing snare drum, the tenors, um, timpanis, percussion instruments, the drum set. And I was just really obsessed with that. Um, just thought I'd get a scholarship, you know, doing that. Um, and then I had a friend who was like an amazing pianist. And I wish I got into like maybe playing the piano um, because that'll, that'll definitely help me out right now. But I wish I got into that because he was like my mentor, probably a year older than me. And I remember he started producing music or like making beats for his cousins and people in the neighborhood. And, you know, I remember, you know, I think all of us, most of us who are drummers or anybody in music, you'd be in the lunchroom, you know, people are rapping. So they'd be like, yo, Harry, at that moment, they would call me by my real name, Lomre. But they're like, yo, Lomre, yo, play a beat, you know, put a beat. And I'd just be on the, the, the table, just boom, boom, cat, cat, you know, doing stuff like that. And then I was like, man, I want to make beats. I wonder how do I make beats? So my friend taught me. And from there, I, I think I was about 16, I was just obsessed. Every day I would, or every other day, I would always go to his house. He, he introduced me to Fruity Loops. That was the first program I used and it's still the same program I use till today. And um, I would just go to his house, ride my bike to his house. He had his nice house, nice sound system, his parents' house, I mean. I would go listen to this beat, listen to this beat, like all the time, all the time. His name is Stro. Um, still to this day, I look up to him and uh, he's a really great musician in my opinion. So it started out from there, and then the rest, I just just kept going, man. Just kept going with it. And now you've moved on to creating blockchain art. How were you introduced to blockchain, and what made you realize that you could put these two things together? Well, I was introduced probably like late 2019, early 2020. Um, it started out like with my social token first. Um, and I remember I was in a, I was doing like something like this, similar to this with the whale community. Um, and it was a guy, you know, Allegria, uh, that community was so friendly. Like they just, just opened up resources to me. Just like, yo, you should do this. Yo, you should do this. Yo, you should do this. And another guy named Carlos, he's from Forefront. And they're like, you should, you should start getting into NFTs. Maybe, you know, just, you know, putting, finding a way to, you know, 
blend your music in with the NFTs. And I really didn't have any idea, you know, what NFTs were, obviously. But I just kept saying, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll try it. I'll do it. So then uh, I remember they, I think it was Rarible or OpenSea. And uh, Allegria said, yeah, man, you should get your token on OpenSea and then start selling your NFTs for first. And I still, I didn't understand. I didn't, I was like, oh man, no, I just want to get into it fast. I just want to get into it like right now. So Rarible was like super user friendly. That had a like easy interface. Um, and it was just like plug and play in my opinion. So I remember I had like old art, just old art that I've done before. Um, and it was just, I was like, okay, well, this seems easy. Let me mint. And I think it was only probably like, ten dollars or five dollars to mint at that time and i think prices are really good now with, with, with minting and i put something up there i put it up for like two or three dollars i was like let me let me try let's see what happens and i remember like someone bought it like in a, a matter of seconds i was like wow this is great i just made two three dollars off of my digital art i said let me do some more let me do some more and then someone was like man you really have like low prices you might want to think about increasing the prices i was like you sure so it started from there, and then I just kind of like get a, got obsessed, and I really wanted to understand <clears throat> like what an NFT was, um, how is it manipulated, what are other people doing out there, uh, how can I <clears throat> make it a bit different. So then that's when I thought, uh, in order for me to kind of do something different, I don't want to just have like these maybe some sketches that I've done or like old pieces of digital art that I've done. I want to get more into like marrying my music with digital art, more like 3D art. Um, and that's when I found like some amazing collaborators and I just kept going from there. I kind of look like, I think I've been telling people this before, but for me, I really look at like, uh, like the digital art aspect of it. I look at that as like maybe me scoring a film when I'm making music to it. Uh, I really like being able to make the music after the digital art piece is done. And that way I can kind of score something to it. Uh, and some collaborators, you know, they like to interpret uh, my music via their digital art. So we, we really wanted to like, I really like it to just like mesh and make sense uh, and have a story behind it. And then we, you know, we just, we go from there. So the basis of most of your work is a collaborative effort. It's you with the music and someone else with the visuals. Exactly, 99% of the time, like currently right now, that's, that's how I'm doing it. Okay. I love what you said about approaching your work as though you're scoring a film. So I think that most people would create the piece and then figure out a way uh, either to integrate it with somebody else's work or you know to put it out there, but you take the opposite perspective. So you are, like it gives me the idea that you're really working together with your collaborator. You want to see their work before you actually decide what music you're going to put with it. Exactly, exactly. I would love to see the work and yeah, I am a bit picky um, with, who I'm, who, with who I collaborate with. Um, because I mean, I think it is, I think it is like a special thing. I don't know if it's done correctly. And all, and some people don't connect with everything that I do, you know, but um, when I do get those really good collaborations and we really, you know, do a good thing together, you can see, okay, wow. I could tell they appreciated it by how, you know, either fast it went or either what, the, what they paid for it. Uh, and then there are some that, pff, like there's one that I have out right now that I'm just like, I'm super amazed by it. it's a, uh, a virtual reality one. And, you know, it's still sitting there, but I'm just like the right person is going to find it because that one to me, I don't know, it, it really catches me a lot. Let me, but yeah. Um, Enrico Moses just said your CV space is sick. Oh, thanks, man. I think, you know, that's a compliment to you guys, you know. You know, you guys, man, that's another thing. You guys gave me that space and I didn't even know what I was doing, I didn't even know what it was, crypto voxels. And it took me probably like four or five months to like, it just hit me. And I was like, wow, they gave me this space. And then I just started using this. I started using my crypto voxels for a lot in 2020. I kind of slowed down now, but yeah. Yeah, I feel like it has really changed the scene. Like for me, what got me super excited about like moving around in crypto voxels is I'm someone who 
loves visiting new galleries, museums on a regular basis. Like that's something that I'm doing every week. And then of course, with the pandemic, a bunch of galleries closed down. Um, I wasn't able to access them and I was like really not getting my fix. And as a user to be able to fully immerse yourself in someone's work, in someone's space. And like for you, like you get to create from the ground up, right? Like it's not just displaying your work. It's like how you want to build the type of energy you want through the space, that kind of thing. It really, I feel like honestly, the metaverse saved me <laughs> during yeah. the pandemic. Like not being able to connect with art the way that I usually would want to. Like, even though of course I was still missing the social aspect, it, yeah. it helped for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah. agree same same it was stimulating it's stimulating looking at yeah. other people's crypto boxes and it stimulates my mind too when i'm like tweaking my own as well so i totally understand so we have not talked about your social token yet let's do that let's talk about it man that's the most important isn't it <laughs> the most important so first yeah man I, I i love my social token i love it uh, it started like same, like I said, like end of 2019, early 2020. Um, it's called First. It's, you know, my name, Harrison First. And it started out as a fan token, you know, to give access to people, early access to people to like, you know, music that's not out, maybe some live streams. Um, and then like going to events uh, in Discord and Crypto Voxels. Um, but as I started to learn more about social tokens and seeing what other people are doing and just learning more about crypto space in general, uh, I really wanted to add utility uh, to my token uh, because you do start to get those questions like, what can you do with this? What can you do with first? What can you do with first? Uh, and then I started thinking like, well, yeah, what can, what can people really do with it? Other than, uh, yeah, people who don't, I'm, cause I'm not, you know, people who don't, listen to my music, then it's like, you can't do anything with it. So then I said, okay, let me really add something to it. Um, so then I, said, I really, I wanted to target the NFT community because it's it's art that I'm also into as well. Uh, so that's when I thought, let me, let me, well, the first one I did was like, let me offer some NFTs in first. Okay, so uh, my community really benefited from that because they held the majority of the tokens uh, so we did that with OpenSea, and I said, okay, let me target other NFT artists who are really good, and I would give them, like, they would be able to earn first by listing in first. So I tried that as well. I tried another thing where I was, like, rewarding the community based off of, you know, streaming my music that I just put out, uh, and that was really cool. That was a cool experiment. I've done a, a lot of different experiments, but currently... The main focus for first, um, it pretty much is an economy around it via first audio. Uh, and first audio is a marketplace for music producers and NFT creators. Uh, so essentially what can what's going to be taking place is that NFT creators who don't produce their own music can now go to this marketplace and pull from music uh, as much music as they want just by holding 1000 first. Uh, this is something that I see can be a really, really key component within um, social token space as well as the NFT community and a marketplace that hasn't been created yet or tapped into. Uh, so it is really gaining like some special interest from outside parties. Uh, and as we continue to increase the marketplace, uh, bring on new producers, because as of right now, I am the only producer uh, that's, you know, uh, like creating all the music for the vault, uh, for NFT, uh, for creators to come to, uh, we're going to just, yeah, continue to grow from there, man. But that's, that's the main focus. And there's other little things that people can do at first, but first audio is the main thing. Okay. So I just want to make sure people don't miss that. Cause that's, that's a, to me, that's a huge development. So you have created this vault of music that is, I, obviously not quite open source, but seemingly open source, as long as you have um, your social token. So 1000 first, you're able to access music that you can then use um, in your own projects. So a little 
um, I have a couple questions about it. Like, can people purchase the music and use it any way that they want, or are you no. controlling the ways that people can use it? No, they can only monetize uh, in their NFTs. So uh, only for NFT projects. It's not for like artists, music artists who want to come and then like use, a, you know, use a beat for their own like EP or album or something. It's only for the NFT community. Um, but they're able to manipulate the the music as they want within their NFT creation. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, they can manipulate as what how they want. What they're getting is just a solid MP3 track. So there's not no no stems or no like. Uh, separations like you know here's just the snare the bass and that they'll just get the whole track and yeah cut it reverse it do whatever you want manipulate it do whatever you want with it uh, this is like that's what this is here for at the moment I'm 31 Bravo Rock is asking what platform is the token available on uh, it's on the th it's well on the Ethereum blockchain you can go on Uniswap uh, and swap for it um, yeah, that's the that's the primary place where people can go. They usually go on Uniswap uh, and get it there. So, I mean, these are this is a big project, but are you working on anything else right now, as well? Uh, right now, I would say, well, NFT collaborations. One with Dutch Tide that um, that uh, is going to be really good. He's a really good collaborator that I work with. His specialty is called Tide Estate. And he just has these really elaborate, scaled out buildings that you want to live in. You know, when you think they're real and you're like, where can we find this? But they're not real. So we have that, which we just, we're trying to figure out the best time for that. Uh, also with a, a, a young NFT creator who's like really making some noise. His name is Loose. I think he's based out of LA. Uh, we just did a collaboration probably, I think two or three weeks ago that was really good. Um, so we're doing our second one. We're working on our second one right now. Um, but other than that, it, it's, it's that, it's those two NFT collaborations that I have coming up and just really focusing on First Audio. I'm really excited to see how you develop First Audio. I think it has huge, huge potential. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And what are the ways that people can best keep in touch with you? Yeah, I mean, when, uh, on Discord, Telegram, you know, I think uh, the Discord link is on Twitter. So if you just go on Twitter, you go Harrison first, or you go to First Audio Club, uh, you'll see the Discord link there. Uh, I'm always, like, anybody who talks to me there, I always get back to them. Uh, also, uh, Telegram, the link is on Twitter as well. I always get back to people there. Sometimes on Instagram, it's hard for me to see it, but yeah. Yeah, but everything is Harrison first, and you can find it. Okay, so Harrison first on Twitter, and that's the link to everything else. Exactly. Okay, cool. Where is your work currently um, listed? Where have you minted it? My work, where is my work minted? My NFT? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, I mean, Rarible, OpenSea. We have stuff on uh, um, SignArt. Uh, we also have stuff on... Um, uh, wax. Um, then I have something on foundation that people are sleeping on, but hey, that's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> Y'all better go check out the work on foundation, man. <laughs> Y'all better check that out, man. But hey, that's neither here nor there. You guys, you know, hey. But uh, yeah, I, I would say the one of my favorites, though, is Rarible and OpenSea, just because I started out using that one first. And it's kind of just depending on what type of collab or what type of drop it is or release like we tell that's what uh that's what kind of dictates what platform we meant on cool i see a hello from france from hxmx signature nice oh, what's, up? what's up france so hmx with hxmx to close i'm just going to ask you a series of quick getting to know you questions this is like rapid fire stuff Okay. So some of them are this or that. You just tell me which you prefer. All right. Okay. Drinking coffee or taking a nap? Taking a nap. Same. Sneakers or boots? Boots. What kinds of boots? Black boots, leather boots. 
What's more important to you and a friend, intelligence or a sense of humor? Intelligence. Day at an amusement park or day at the beach? Beaches. I like the beach. Oh, you're beach. not a roller coaster person? I used to when I was a kid, but I just stopped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and team player or better off solo? Team. Go team. I like the team. Yeah. I like that. All right. That's it for us. Let's remind people the best way to keep in touch with you is Harrison First on Twitter. And that links to your Discord and Telegram. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. And uh, anybody want to get in touch, just get in touch. I love to build, man. Thank you so much for the conversation. This was really cool. Thank you. All right. Talk soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. See you.